Times Prime is a loyalty program which offers you benefits across a variety of lifestyle categories. They started off as an OTT offer platform which OTT companies would use to acquire new users, but now they've expanded into a bunch of more categories. The fun part about running a program like that is your renewal rates at the end of a year depend on how well the customer has been able to leverage the platform throughout the year. Right? And in that sense, if somebody is crossed over the four of the 10 things that they offer from a bundle lens, they would definitely renew. So Gyan Pratap Singh from Time Stripe, who's leading growth for them, is really on a charter to make sure people see and squeeze as much value out of the platform as they can, and hence the renewal rates look great. Let's hear it out. We'd love to understand your journey, Gyan, from where you started, where you end up. I started with my BCA. So when, when everyone in my age group was aiming for IIT or something, but I was very sure that I, I cannot crack IIT. Someone told me that, he, why don't you opt for BCA? That's a three-year program. You'll become software engineer. So I thought, okay, that's a, that's a good thing to do. So I decided to BCA. And when I did BCA, then I got to know BCA is not something which will give you everything. So you have to do masters also. And then I thought to do MCA. Some, somewhere I realized that I'm not a good coder. But I like management overall because in BC and MCA, you used to have one subject of management, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people used to say at that moment, oh, you're good in communication, you're good in engagement with people. So you can connect with anyone in any new ecosystem. You should try something there. But market was tricky. And somehow I got a call from a company which was a outsourcing company IT outsourcing company I was not knowing that what is PPC at that moment in 2011 it was a normal interview right when they asked me to write some ad copies I wrote that ad copies and there was some grammar test and I got selected so that's the way mm -hmm. I started and that was an outsourcing product project where I used to work on Google accounts and when I only used to do match type changes mm -hmm. keyword match type changes negative addition but somehow, I realized that if company like Google are betting on these kind of services or product, and Microsoft is, was also that much aggressive at that moment, right? Hmm. So I thought, okay, this is the something. But if I have to be in this industry, then I have to move to the domestic market. And that way, I moved from my first company to Yellow Pages India. Sure. And Yellow Pages was going through a transformation phase at that moment. In 2013-14, I got this thing that... My manager told me, right, Ki, do you want to be a Google guy or do you want to be a jack of all? Then I started working on different, different things, right? Facebook, I started working. I started working on product also. I started working on website, engagement, that way. And I was fortunate enough to got the opportunity to work on any emerging product or category. Sure. 2014 was a time for these payment and e-commerce e that the bubble was there, right? Mm. Everyone was starting an e-commerce website. So I... I was fortunate enough to work with Paytm at that time for Paytm Mall in 2014. 2015, I was leading Paytm e-commerce team, entire e-commerce team. When this Ask Me Bazaar uh, thing didn't work, I got an opportunity from Middle East. Um, I went to Dubai. That was an e-commerce website for which I was working. And in India, it is a Google major company, big, big Google major country where you search everything on Google. But in Middle East, it was a Facebook major. And then I came to India. Um, I joined Indigo. And I became the part of digital transformation team, which was quite good. Quite new for marketing me. digital transformation now. Huh? Right. And it was totally different because it was an omni-channel product. Yeah. Or you can say physical product. And post Indigo, I think I joined Paytm again hmm. to lead the growth team. Post that, I... I tried my hands with B2B lending company. Hmm. I created the customer support team. Okay. I created the customer experience. This is like zero to one kind of journeys, obviously. The yeah, the they, were just, they were just 50 or 55 plus. Yeah. So I started working on product also. Hmm. I, said, I started playing the role of UI UX guy. But this customer support and customer experience was a completely different assignment. Sure. So till that point, I've been through number of companies. Yeah. In Quite my diverse career. bunch of experiences. Number of experience, number of assignment, number of category. But there was one thing which was creating trouble. Which was right, okay. When I used to talk with any good company, they have only one concern. Yeah, and you have a lot of knowledge, 
you have worked on different different assignment but you hardly work for one and a half year in any company right so this is the problem and mm. now we are hiring someone for a senior role we can take that risk and the thing was in my mind that i have to work on this thing somewhere i have to stop i can't be always like ki i have to learn 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 somewhere i have to sit sure and then this time sprint thing happened they have one problem subscription you were going to zoom into this whole time stream charter when you came in with a whole bunch of diverse experiences the the charter at time stream why you were hired you mentioned earlier was this whole thing around uh, the acquisition right driving that and simplifying that and reducing the cost right let's zoom into this as to what this meant for you uh, from a you know initial success plan first quarter charter how did that package the problem on the table was right they were driving subscription they they have seen some scale in the past they realized like there is a potential in the product sure covid helped them to scale at a point because mm. a lot of uh, ott viewers content consumption uh, content consumption increased so they saw this momentum and they they onboarded some new product in the bundle and they were confident that the they have put all the energy to make this bundle a bigger one sure right a more engaging one but now they wanted that they have one problem that how will they scale this and how will they distribute this they have two channel one was b2b and one was b2c b2b used to so there is a team who used to work with banks and sure. other partners mm. who buy bulk subscription and they gratify their customer with that subscription that would be get bundled with a bunch of credit cards i guess right. yeah second was b2c mm. uh, b2c was a high cac channel low scale and all so when i joined back to performance marketing uh, when i joined then i got to know right okay junior was a very minuscule budget on performance because we used to aim for profitability from day one so nahi karte the utna but when i joined times prime i saw some historical data we saw like there was some there was a defined martech stack mm. like we used to work with different different channel and then it was completely on me right like, what you want to do so i took that assignment in the interview only that ki i will drive that thing Fix so this. i started working on and ipl was going on in that month mm. april and may we didn't saw the good traction with even ipl and we were not confident right if including hot star with ipl is not helping then what is going to help sure. right june worked much better than may so what did you change from may to june which help matters i just did basic changes okay right? whenever i start i start with basic right if you see a channel is giving two car away another channel is giving three car away but you are putting more money into just because of your seeing scale but can we mm. aim a bigger scale with three car away channel where we can save a lot of money right a channel which is showing a better renewal rate a channel which is showing a better redemption rate mm. shouldn't we put more money there okay so we we analyze a lot of data there was only one person in my team and me and that person analyze mm. this data mm. and we got to know okay so we saw right facebook was not able to convince to management facebook number was not able to convince the management that they are helping business to grow sure but when we analyze a full funnel activity we realized facebook is helping at a big level okay because it was creating a mid funnel and upper funnel but mm. somehow bottom funnel was being captured by google only right we did this experiment we started increasing budget on facebook and the number started doing magic okay right and we saw decent scale i think close to 70% growth in one month from may to june okay hmm. and when we saw this number in june we realized okay this is working we have reached to a level we should optimize discount we should optimize this spend we did that chain and this went to <laughs> okay next level right but we got this thing right channel has the potential to work it can deliver now we have to work on different different component sure creative has to play a different mm. role offer and discount has to play a different role and channel the combination of these three will mm. definitely play a better role okay i started working on these optimization thing and we had good august month then september used to be our birthday month we saw some number right. we reached to mm. a milestone which was given to us and everyone was convinced that they were they started seeing some growth and some chart that there is a growth happening 
ROIs. Just to give a reference point, when you entered the game, how old was Times Prime already? I think three or four, four years. And what was the nature of scale? That moment, they were sitting at 2.5 million. Subscriber base right. or install base. Subscriber, Subscriber base. base. All right. So whatever growth you're talking about is now in terms of this is a starting point, but it was on a back of not the most efficient acquisition. And now some hygiene sex have kind of helped you clean up and then the month on month acquisition has scaled up to a meaningful level. Okay. okay. But this would also mean a whole bunch of renewals are happening every month or not happening. Right. So renewal was happening. But again, the amount of acquisition you are doing mm. in a month, that is only to get renewed after a certain yeah, period of, of time. Right. If you're putting 100, then only 60, 70 will get renewed. Consider the renewal rate. Yeah. Mm. If we aim for the best one. So... The primary objective was, can we increase this 100? Sure. I started working on that increasing 100, right? And I realized, okay, we have reached to a certain point where we have seen a capacity or potential of a particular channel, paid marketing channel like Google and Facebook. Mm. We have seen them. We, we realized, right, okay, these channels can be optimized, but not... It's only so far. Not exactly. Mm. From a certain point of time, you will see that this CAC is not going to go down. Yeah. I started working on creating a new stream of acquisition. Okay. Okay. I thought, right, okay, Google and Facebook have reached to a certain point. Now I have to work on different stream. Mm. That stream was third party. Mm -hmm. I started figuring out the website, apps, who is a transacting user, who are open for business collaboration in terms of ads and all. Okay. Okay. I figured out some companies. So at that moment, I first of all, I figured out Book My Show. Book my show was an entertainment category sure. website. I thought like we have OTT content. Book my show as a movie and all. If I try to place one of my banner on book my show with some certain deal, right? So they were open for CPM deal. I convinced them with a CPS deal. That worked pretty well for me. Sure. But didn't work pretty well for book my show. Okay. When you do CPS, this doesn't work every time in both favor. Right. If you put them in a hierarchy of cost earning or revenue Plus. stream, CPM is the highest revenue stream source. There is also a commitment on any nature, right? I mean, it's committed, it's sold. Haan. Then I started creating these 3P channels. Hmm. Book My Show was the first experiment where I saw the potential, right? That sure. This pilot can give value. Now I realized this is one website, one app. I have to include number of website and app in it. Hmm. I hired one guy. Okay. I gave him that assignment that your only job is to create this stream. We made 5x of June in October. In terms of new subscriptions sold via these alternate channels. Right. Okay. Sure. Because you've taken a CPS route which is mm -hmm. efficient for you even, may or may not be even for publisher. We, we work with a mix of these uh, costing model or attribution models. With some we work with CPM wherever it was possible. But at the back end, we were checking, right? How exactly my blended ROI mm. thing is working, my blended CAC is working, even so who were all open. Like phone pay was open with cost per voucher redemption. Okay. Right. They have this reward thing, right? Google mm. Pay has this reward thing. They, they have a different kind of costing model. Mm. So different, different company, different, different product, different, different costing model. We work with them. Sure. Right. And when we realize, okay, this can be another stream, our reliance was little relaxed from Google and Facebook because yeah. we got to know. But you said you grew 5x which is obviously quite substantial and pretty much you know, like you said take Google and Facebook a lot easier than you did previously. See right Google and Facebook we already hit a point. Yeah you right. kept that. Right. So we, we got to know okay so mm. we have reached to a point we don't have to scale that much because that needs more cost. And, and the ROI ROI was even not matching with these new channels. Sure. So in some sense, from the ROI lens, when you look at uh, the subscription value, dollar value, right, it's a fairly high margin product, I would imagine, because most of your suppliers of those offers will end up being doing it for their own acquisition games. It is. It has a cost of goods sold. Sure. Yeah. This bundle has a cost of goods good sold involved, and when we measure this ROI, we consider that thing also as the margin. If level. all of them could have been a complementary thing from different different brands, then it didn't matter. You could acquire for as much. It's it's all revenue and income yeah, for us. But sure. there was a cogs yes, involved. So we had to make sure, right, we reached to that particular level. Mm. And we have to make sure that we we, we are sitting mm. at that level mm. in terms of marketing cost and ROI. But these three third party and 
even affiliate was not there at that moment because mm-hmm. we did affiliate in the past the affiliate is highly abused category in marketing cost right we try to work with affiliate and 3p and then we created this stream and this stream helped us to build a much bigger pool of acquisition in every single month which gave the confidence to retention team that they can work on different different retention so, campaign so, so. rather than mm. just working on renewals got it in times prime bundle you see lot of product comes with a validity of 3 month 6 month mm. some come with one year sure the product which comes with the validity of 3 month or 6 month we give them the option to top up okay right you got times prime now you see 6 month of sony live what will happen when your sony months. live expires mm. so this this thing came into the picture right okay we can offer top ups also mm. because why to wait for a year to get them renewed fair enough so we invented this thing but would this be substantially discounted compared to what i'm getting outside definitely it is man definitely and can i also let's say schedule my activations a little more sequentially that the first three months i'll use this then i'll use this or will this all become on on the day of my time stamp purchase no 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 this is like so suppose you bought time prime and you got sony live 6 months you have a liberty to activate this offer even last day of your subscription right. like uh, that way and this top up also you can buy and park but from a seamlessness of this journey because you know you have a dining and you have an ott and you have a content platform and you have a bunch of different things that i could potentially consume after coming in so from a user experience lens how do you make that part seamless enough to also have visibility that he's actually done this versus not done this so we have a segment in our app or area in our app where you can check right out mm-hmm. of these much offer this 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 has been activated okay on which date and this will expire on this date okay right and whenever you redeem any offer on our app we ask you right have you redeemed this also right if you redeem sony live here did you redeem this in sony it's app available. also hmm. wherever we have this coupon code redemption thing wherever we have a api integration so i was going to zoom into because there are some places where you will have these integrations to get this feedback right. but not everywhere right for hot star we have a api integration you hmm. don't have to so when we did this change this create a lot of problem with with customer also because lot of one customer visited times prime office even to activate hotstar okay he said i am not getting the coupon code mm. but we said there is no coupon code yeah you just have to log in in hotstar it will be automatically activated so for api it's integrated more thing, seamless but consumer expectation was still the previous one okay right but is that an active charter to make all of this more seamless across wherever yeah, you yeah. in, in what is active charter right product has this thing mm. it helps both of us even mm. right कोड लीकेज का प्रॉब्लम नहीं होगा राइट यू ऑल सारा यू सी अ बैच ऑफ कोड देन यू हैव टू पुट दिस इन सिस्टम एंड देन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हैपेंस देन वैलिडेशन ऑफ कोड्स हैज टू बी पास ऑन टू द पार्टी सो दैट थिंग विल गो अवे राइट लॉट ऑफ ऑपरेशनल हर्डल्स विल गो अवे सो दैट्स व्हाई वी आर वर्किंग ऑन ऑन दिस थिंग सो लॉट ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट्स आर रनिंग ऑन दैट फ्रंट बट देयर आर स्टिल नंबर ऑफ कंपनी व नॉट दैट टेक सैवी और हु डोंट वांट टू पुट दैट एनर्जी इन दैट बिकॉज़ फॉर देम दिस इज एक्विजिशन कैंपेन Right, that's what I was going to get to. The moment is <laughs> to top up. Now this acquisition is gone, and their preparedness to discount your user for a top up seems like okay. Why should I do it? Because he would rather renew on my own platform instead of doing it here. He'd also be running their own acquisition slash retention campaign. Right. right? For me, for time span, there is a renewal team who is working on this thing. Right. For at their end, there is a growth team who is working on this thing because for them this is the acquisition. Which is well. They are looking at a book my show as a channel of growth. They are looking at time stream as a channel of growth. Right. And what's very interesting to understand is, you know, just like a policy bazaar would, let's say, uh, sell me a policy, but the insurance itself would try and renew me directly as well because right. the data is shared. Your world as well. Once the app has been installed, obviously you're competing with that company for that because if I renew with them, then automatically uh, your business gets affected. the only thing why people go for time spring rather than directly renewing mm-hmm. with the brand so i was speaking with one of a brand guy who was working with either mm-hmm. i think sony or hotstar mm-hmm. so we asked right ki what is the difference between your platform and our platform he says first is trust right if a customer has a trust with sony then he will definitely go with sony sure he will not go with you it is a better deal than he will no uh, and unless he is a deal seeker Which a majority of Indians are aren't they? Right. So then he will go for your product. No one can get Times Hot Star and Sony Live for six month duration in eight ninety nine. Correct. Even with some more deals, right? Absolutely. We have thousand rupees flat discount 
on Reliance Digital on top of any other discount. That too in our 899 pack, sure. which we sell with the discount, that is a 1199 pack. So it seems like a very sweet deal, but my question will come to the fact that if somebody has taken, let's say redeemed everything that's there in the platform, he squeezed all the juice out of it. He's been acquired by all the platforms that they, was, they were hoping to yeah, acquire. Yeah, because their team is, they, now, they, they have their own retention team. Absolutely. Who, who hardly cares, right, from which source it has come. Okay, right. For them, it has a data and they have to get this customer renewed with their own offering. So, in some sense, will you end up just running an acquisition machine and renewals might or might not be? Because the second time the same consumer renews on time prime, will he continue to get the same offers with your partner? Is that something you negotiate that my See, guy renewing should continue to get those six months free? That's what... That's what the discussion uh, we used to have with our business head, right? Mm. So whatever you are putting in the bundle, don't put it for three months, six months or a year. Mm. If you're putting something, put it for three years, five years. So we have this long tail sure. deal with the key offering, right? Yeah. So we say, right, 20 plus subscription, 40 plus brands, right? This is our tagline. When this 20 plus subscription out of this 20, there are four or five or 10, you can say, which gets the highest redemption. redemption. Right. And there are also the reasons why people buy. In some right, sense. right, right. So, we always push this in front of the management that these 10 has to have a long tail deal. Hmm. Because we cannot take that risk because I acquired Ankur with YouTube premium and the next year, he when he renewed, he said, okay, I am not getting YouTube premium. Yeah, so one is I'm not getting it here or two is also I'm getting the same deal there. Why should I bother with you? That's the pricing deal, right? What is the pricing deal we are getting from the brand? Mm -hmm. That's the one thing. Second, for how many duration? Sure. If there's anything which changes at the branding, that is also going to affect us. Absolutely. Like for example, some, so, so like as of now, a lot of content moved from how to start to Geo. Sure. Right. So that the change will Obviously affect will like affect. everyone. If, if that change is affecting that brand, then that is It'll going to affect, affect us also. Well. Because in some sense, you're dependent on a bunch of brands ka pull and then your ability to give a better offer in the whole thing, which yeah. is, it seems like a perfect place for a deal seeker, which right. is taking advantage of your ability to consolidate all of this. But for this business to be viable at your level, the cost of goods sold and the CAC has to always be an interplay. Right. And um, if there's, let's say you mentioned something about, so in terms of just the funnel side of things, right? The number of people who have redeemed X number of things from the platform, it's like saying that I've come to a buffet and I've eaten five things today, but I'll come back tomorrow to eat the next five. There are some bundle offer which we call and there are some listing offer which we call. Listing mm -hmm. offer comes for a shorter duration. One month, two month kind of thing. Okay. Bundle will remain there for entire year. So you're saying that as a member, I might get, let's say, more VIP deals every once in a while just by the virtue of being a member. For example, you might get an option to buy Indian accent ka some buffet deal or something, right? Uh, now we're talking. That's uh, where the massive headroom stays, right? Because I'll remain a time spent member even if I'm not getting the Swiggy or whatever again. It's still valuable. Uh -huh. Swiggy, no, Swiggy you can get in market, right? That's what I'm saying. Hotstar you can get in market. Sony sometimes you can get in market. But there are some curated events like wine tasting event. Purple carpet. Purple event, carpet right? is also yeah. one thing which, which was a, we have trademarked purple carpet. Sure. So purple carpet is one event. Lot of wine tasting, gin tasting, coffee tasting, cake making, even with that premium brand, like mm. with Oburai, with Hilton, with Indian accent, that kind of activity we, we are doing, right? Just to step back a moment and look at this whole business model, I understood the part around the uh, whole customer action play getting optimized to a level where it becomes viable for you. Now you have a portfolio of offerings, which are, let's say, bundled offers from, you know, elsewhere ecosystem where people are looking to acquire new customers. So they use this as a channel of acquisition. But at the same time, you need to make the proposition strong enough for the people who are subscribing. So you'll add some of these tactical components around the experiential side of things, which are valuable for them. But then once again, is this an acquisition strategy for Indian accent in some sense? Or what is it then? See, so right, there's a story there. No one is here for charity, right? So Obviously. everyone is here for business. So if Indian accent is doing something with us, they're definitely looking for business. Hmm. They might offer something as complimentary in that particular event. But later on, if you get the chance to have the food taste and sure. everything, you get to know, right? So he's acquiring customers through you as well. Huh. So in some sense, there's always going to be, I, what I see, this is a kind of advertising platform with a curated audience because these people are active Swiggy customers, Disney Asta, you know their redemption see, patterns. So a lot of people, when, when they see Times Prime, they think that, oh, this is a OTT bundle subscription, but we don't call us an OTT. We say lifestyle bundle say subscription right. because if you talk about OTT bundle subscription, there is a Tata Play. Binge. There's only so far that will go. 
Tata Play Binge, Watch O, OTT Play is also there, right? These are OTT bundle subscription. We make sure that we have to be a 360 degree in our vertical. And we have Across to cross multiple verticals, I would imagine. Right. So we have to have lifestyle, we have to have shopping, we have to have food category also. For example, we have Eat Club, Eat Sure, Swiggy, right? Pizza Hut, MACD. So you know what I was seeing on your website was somebody complimenting the fact that your offering and your rewards tend to be substantially superior than bank rewards or even credit rewards. So in some sense, when somebody yeah, subscribed, someone written on Twitter also, yeah, like, this was highlighted in your website as a key testimonial. Ah, so I thought ah, it's a fairly yeah, valid point made. But what in effect I'm saying is, as a consumer, if I am a Timestone member, I might potentially be somewhere a Taj Epic member, somewhere a Zomato Gold member, somewhere a Swiggy Dineout member also. But this has enough and more to offer for the kind of value it, it's charging me. So I'll continue to remain engaged, and mm. which is where. The engine to keep me coming back to time stream and then give me an experience which somebody truly wants to curate for me. Because in effect, an Indian accent is also advertising in 20 places. But here he's getting a more curated audience, which is consuming a bunch of different things which they can segment and play on. So that's so we have positioned ourselves in the way that so not everyone will be a time sprint customer. Of right. So same like Cred has positioned themselves that they have a elite customer base. Hmm. Transacting customer base who have a credit card. Credit has positioned themselves in a way. Airtel Black has positioned themselves that there is someone who is looking for convenience, who is looking for one bill for everything. There is some exactly premiumness sure. in the nature, right? We also want to position ourselves in that way. This is just not a OTT subscription. Mm. We cater those kind of user in our portfolio who do participate in these kind of high level well, events. Sense, uh, from your own acquisition side of things, is that still driven substantially by OTT redemption kind of stories? Till last year, mid, this was an OTT major. Well, right? That's a conscious shift you're trying to now enable by having we, larger portfolio of experiences. Because we, we, we only used to promote Horizon Sony in big sizes in our creative and we thought, right, only this is driving. Sure. But when we started analyzing data, we got to know, no, this is not just OTT. OTT is the first redemption in our bundle. Right. But there are a number of other products in top 10 who has a good volume of redemption. Sure. And every product has a different redemption cycle. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you buy Times Prime with this mindset that you have to watch Hottest Star, you will immediately redeem Hottest Star. Right. But if you are a the customer for which we say that he has reached to a Eureka moment or aha moment, that kind of customer makes sure that he has to redeem Uber. At what time he has to redeem pizza hut at what time there's a pattern right when we measure this data and we see this data right does the user didn't move in a certain direction or at least make sure he doesn't uh -huh. forget to redeem something every week then then we have this trigger right yeah. we have the marketing trigger or retention mm. trigger or communication trigger but for this five month or six month charter we make sure right what is happening yeah and do we have the same pattern or not mm. and if we include any new product in the bundle what is the change that product is making is there any okay. shift in the redemption flow? When we introduce YouTube in our bundle, this shows us a different number, mm. a different redemption number. Because in open market, you can see one month YouTube trial, two month YouTube trial, but we have two plus two, right? And that deal attracted a lot of customers. Sure. And we got to know that not only the Hotter Star and Sony Live, there are some other product in the bundle mm. which can drive acquisition and which can drive a better retention throughout the year. And people do park their redemption. It's in some sense, uh, there's also this whole world of coalition loyalty, which is not exactly the same thing. At the same time, there's a bunch of points that expire all the time. So in terms of the unredeemed vouchers in your world, which is the part that I would be sad about as a user when I'm ending my subscription, that's the guilt that will probably refuse the renewal rates in some sense. So I'm assuming there's a charter to make sure that the redemption rate crosses over the minimum threshold where people are happy to now see value right. out of so, this. So that's the job of retention team, right? Mm. So when when we talk about retention, we do not say that just a renewal. Sure. I mean, there's a whole the of one job between. is that to get them engaged with the app throughout the year. Right. That's why because you have activated Autostar and Sony Live, we know right in which category you fall or what is your persona. And we know right if you have activated Autostar and Sony, the chances and probability to activate X offer is very high for you. Sure. And that way the communication happens, right? Mm. Kyankur, please activate this offer. This is only for you. 
that way and we we'll make sure testing the foam oil and all yeah, of that conservation thing uh, we we make sure right you have to reach a particular level mm. to become a best customer of renewal fair enough because we know right if you reach to the 6 ka mark or 7 yes. ka mark in term of redemption that you have activated seven offer so your chances to be renewed with times prime is 99.99% so kind of wise we keep selling you right that for so you when you've saved this much money so it makes sense for you to renew in 11 months you save 1000 rupees so that's, right. rupees, so that's, that's the thing right. we have in our app also yeah. that this much of money you have said and that's why mm. every single offer has a worth associated with it Like Sony has a worth. Perfect into a dollar value. Hotel, Hotel Star has a worth. YouTube has a worth. So we say that as worth. So the moment you and when we sell this product in acquisition campaign, we mention right, you might save up to sixty thousand. And how you will save sixty thousand? Everything. That's there. The calculator is also there sure. in our website. That you can imagine. calculate. So I mean, it's still a fairly sweet deal that for eight nine nine or one thousand, whatever the price point is, you get sixty thousand worth of benefits. Just do it. Huh. It works but, amazingly. But I was I, I was having this uh, mm. discussion with the product head, right? Ki what is the average a customer save? Sure. And we got to know that the thirteen thousand is the average value which a customer saves in Times Prime ecosystem. There will be different cohorts which will have different huh. behaviors but and the goals. The average is coming out. It would you also, in some sense, try to move away from slash move towards the whole. Luxury experiences and fine dining plays, if then that automatically changes the curation of the audience you have inside, right? Because if somebody is coming in purely the deal seeker that I've gotten hostel cheap, that's a kind of audience persona which is valuable uh, to a Disney hostel, but may not be the same value to a Indian accent. And from that lens, if the positioning changes, your segmentation ability of getting that top end, what Red promises today is the top end of the spectrum. You know, we work with this company called Easy Diner. And what Easy Diner ends up promising to a bunch of banks that I'll reactivate your card usage, but you're going to give me those 800 rupees off per dinner. So it's insane value, and they see a lot of traction in terms of people consuming offers, uh, dining at five star. So five star buffet will have amazing offers on right. Easy Diner. And the reason the reason they're able to charge that premium is because of the positioning and the audience persona they claim to have. Right. right, I'm giving you access to premium audience. So where I see you guys somewhere headed is to also let's say go a little up market in terms of the kind of audience persona. At the same time, offer those experiences which will keep these guys engaged. So. That's why we have crafted acquisition channel, right? Yeah. So, as we are catering these premium brands on our platform, we want premium customer also. We need volume also. Sure. So there are some channel which is driving a volume mm. acquisition. There are some channel which is driving a tier one or premium customer acquisition. So what I would then imagine is uh, your book my show is your channel for the OTT, but you will have maybe some other places we are acquiring customers with the Indian accent as a face. Would, would fair statement to say? Not exactly Indian accent I mean, as a face, exactly. but we make sure right if we are targeting a customer on website X, that website X should have a potential to have that kind of customer base on their mm. website, mm. and there must be that user the positioning of. Ads or positioning of banner has to happen in that way. Hmm. That what kind of user? So even if we are putting a on a deal website and putting a Times Prime with the X Y Z amount of discount, we know right that deal seeker is coming with that way. And recently we created a one bigger pack with a high MRP, right? So our premium pack is eleven nine nine, but we hmm. call it power pack. But we are yet to decide the final name because we call it power and premium. So everyone was saying that premium is. Much yeah, bigger in size than, uh, power. than power, <laughs> but power have seventeen ninety nine MRP. Hmm. We thought right, okay, there are number of people who want to buy eight ninety nine because they just want Sony and Hotel Star. Sure, let's give them some more value hmm. and make it one seven nine nine a bigger pack. Hmm. We were not sure that what kind of traction we are going today in the flow. But you'll have both offerings, or you'll kill this for that. We had both. Yeah, we started with both. We started giving the option to switch from. Premium to Achha. power during the mm. payment flow. Sure, we didn't put this upfront on the website. Mm. The moment we put it on growth, we saw super response. So the appetite to pay more for a more valuable subscription exists. Right, because in some sense the delta on savings would also be more substantial. Is that the same lens? Yes, immediate gratification was higher. Sure, right, stickiness with some product for a year long basis was mm. higher. Mm. Second. We got some more room in term of ROI. Yeah, sure. Right. Acquisition costs don't necessarily change that crazily, right? Ha, right. So, and 
we got some more room even some channel which were not a roi making channel they became roi making channel but you know so let's just jump into a little bit of uh, understanding the orchestration of these segments and while of course the offerings are coming i'm assuming there's a supply team which builds all of these offerings and brings them to you for yeah, yeah. There, engagement there, and distribution there is a team which source these offers Correct. right and for some offer it so for some offer it, it took more than one and a half year some sure the part of the negotiation right? But from the assets that you have available to kind of distribute these offers and get them better discovered by your audience and ultimately give better traction and ROI and to the brand. Right, even so, right, Uber is with us from mm. day one. Sure. And uh, we we receive a lot of appreciation from Uber, right? Mm. That kind of uh, customer they get from our platform. This is not just they get customer. Sure. See, they have to see that what kind of renewal rate they are seeing for the customer which they have acquired through sure. time spring. Sure. If the quality is intact, then I think this deal. Deal is going to be, you know, in very simplified terms. You basically have got the entire transacting base, right? These guys are doing something. They are subscribing to it already. So you have a curated bunch of transacting users which are there. And for any brand which is not yet as mainstream, this would be a place where they can find somebody new. Yeah, that's why when we do any fest and mm -hmm. all, we do list some offers. So whenever we do any kind of sale, we oh, we do reveal word. some product of the day kind of mm -hmm. thing, because during the sale period, we do a lot of branding activity we do some print activity also we have some digital oh also mm. so that time we cater a lot of traffic on our platform we do acquisition in a full swing so there is an active user base on the app and if customer acquires in that period they get the opportunity to buy different different brand vouchers at a discounted price or brand deal at a discounted price for example my glam they are very active in doing these kind of campaign right sure. joff is also active yeah. in doing these kind of campaign so that way also we make sure, right? So not only the bundle, this listing also has to. What my contention is boiling down to, Gyan, is the fact that if you have a large enough user base and uh, you're going to have all of these things coming in, if you bombard everybody with everything, it'll be a nightmare, and you'll have a lot of turnoffs as well. So I'm assuming this whole smartness of segmentation is already a very meaningful play, and you doubly can understand this better. Huh. I'm not saying that I'm 100% mature in that category, saying. right? So we we are sitting at 50% somewhere mm -hmm. close. We have transactional data, right? What kind of user getting renewed? We have this data, right? What kind of user are buying top ups? Sure. And third, we have this data, right? What is their behavior? Mm. Right. So when we talk about behavior, we say, right, okay, you have affinity towards Sony, you have affinity towards Hotstar, and then you have affinity towards a mm. different brand. Mm. So the personas are there, right? And we know, right, persona A has an affinity towards brand B. Sure. Right. And if we want to push this brand B, we have, we know very well that brand, similar kind of brand has shown a better engagement with persona A, not persona B. Sure. So we don't have to touch persona B for this thing. There we go. Yeah. So uh, precisely. Uh, we don't have to touch persona B for selling brand, brand A. A. Correct. So that way this communication happens. So again, let's just dig a little bit deep into the numbers side of things. You know, in your world, retention is a fairly important attribute and you would uh, also be considering the various channels of acquisition and what they're bearing on retention looks like. And some of this stitching together can be a little messy. So you had a product team and you had a growth team and you had a bunch of BI resources working on some of these topics. Help us understand some of the decision making that happens on this side. We have two acquisition sources in terms of product, right? So we have one B2B channel and one is B2C channel. So, and when we talk about retention, we check for both these sources. Sure. And this, this retention happens in a way, right? Some of the user who have acquired through B2B post their one year, they switch to B2C. Okay. Right. The user. So B2B would mean a credit card would be selling right. a time for membership. For example, be activated. a customer who have got time prime with Vija ka offer, right? Okay. He used that visa offer for a year and it's just to get this clear, when he redeems his visa offer, he has to come to Timestime and create an account and just whatever coupon code to become our Timestime. Right, right. Guy. So there's there's the normal flow for Timestime is that you get a coupon code. And so if that's a full discount coupon code, like a banking coupon hmm. code or something, you get 100% discount on, on the, the checkout page. Got it. To buy Timestime, you can use any platform like M site, website, okay. or mm -hmm. app. Okay. But to redeem offer, you have to have Times yeah. Prime app in your mobile. I'm assuming that's a hundred percent people who have a Times subscription have the app. Have the app. Yeah. Right. Because you cannot redeem from website. Sure. 
so you have to have app and that's the only reason we do not run aggressive app acquisition campaign sure you know because we know right this acquisition will happen through m site or website and mm. which is m site major right sure 90% of acquisition happens through m site because no one mm. is purchasing through laptop as of these days so i was telling you right one is a b2b acquisition one is a b2c acquisition sure for so us split broadly the it's a decent split and they both have i think close share b2b even have will have a higher sure. share because they do it's distribution deal in big number mm-hmm. and distribution b2c was very low one year back but that way b2c has scaled up society. scaled up so then it is uh, giving a tough fight to b2b okay. and now it it holds a decent share in the business hmm. we do renewal or we do categorize renewal in two way one is right b2c to b2c sure right you acquired that customer from b2c and that customer gets renewed in b2c hmm. pack then you acquired customer from b2b and he gets renewed in again a b2b pack okay but there is some diversion happens hmm last year he you bought through b2c channel now you have a visa card and you got this visa deal so you move to b2b sure right so if we club all these combination permutation and mm. combination then my renewal looks close to 60 65 okay percent right which is a decent It's number fairly number it's a mm. decent number and we are more than happy with that thing though we have to reach to the next level but always an example we are we are happy with that thing mm. but this renewal doesn't only comes with the uh kind of right we acquire a customer and then at the end of year we get this 60% 65% renewal there's a lot of thing which happens in the background to get this to reach to this level of renewal right b2c might have a lower renewal rate compared to b2b okay right but when we club both of them then this is the average value you know i've been understand this a little bit gyan uh, normally a number hides a bunch of details Right. So 65% is a weighted average of a bunch of components. You might have five different channels of acquisition. Each right. of them, if you were to carve it out, will have a different renewal rate. Probably. I, I can give you. Or some, is it the same? I can give you some estimate also, mm. right? So if we're talking about some acquisition sources like mm. acquisition sources like Google and Facebook, their renewal ranges in between 35 to 40 percent. So it's pulling your overall number yeah, down. Yeah, overall number sense. little down. But we understand, right? Oh, that's that's okay. that's a channel and that's the nature of that channel, mm. right? and the energy which we have put in there so and even if the 35 to 40% renewal rate we matched with the industry that sits on a higher side sure. and that helps us it's not an absolute good or bad it's just something right, that right. for different maybe. product it yeah. is different for a product like us it is different hmm. for channel like 3p we we have seen a better renewal rate something is also pulling the average up so what is right that? right so the 3p ka renewal rate is close to 45 to 50 okay right and even we have seen a a uh, seasonal renewal rate right okay. when we say seasonal right suppose for example we have acquired we did a sale in the month of august as a freedom sale mm. we do every year mm. that's the one sale which we do with the lowest price right so we measured this sale renewal rate also right okay. uh, user we have acquired in the month of august what is the renewal rate for that user in current year mm. so we saw that if we acquire a customer in seasonal uh, campaign or with a seasonal festive campaign We see a better renewal rate because so they were acquired in the festival and they will also renew during festival because okay. because they they see That's that this is the mm-hmm. same time when they can get the best price deal. Fair enough, right? So there will be a period of dormancy in some sense of all the people who are not renewed and there will be a whole bunch of effort to get them back and that recovery is a pass. We have three approach of renewal. One is at the time of expiry three. and pre renewal. You can. Renew the T minus thirty days, T minus seven days, T plus yeah. whatever. Something. So we have like three month advance renewal process. You can buy and you can park. Suppose you you were supposed to renew in December, but you saw good deal come in October month. You mm-hmm. buy times prime in October. You will park your subscription. Sure, it will automatically automatically renew. refresh. Hmm. So that way it happens. So that's the split of channel. Tell me, what's the kind of people who renew pre expiry? It is good share. I think uh, close to forty percent. Forty percent of the overall renewals, or forty percent of the hundred percent subscribers. No. I mean, you have a fifty-five percent overall renewal. Ka forty. So about twenty percent of overall subscribers, fifty percent, let's say, forty percent is renewing before it's expiring. I I think uh, we started doing this. Last year, somewhere in month of September, October. but now it's a continuous exercise. It's right? a continuous yeah. exercise. 
and it is showing a good so team minus 3 months even we have valid, we have uh, one auto renewal kind of thing in the product also okay right so if you have opted for that thing you will get auto renewed so in some that sense, also drives some value three months a chic valid you have 20% people renewing before their terms expired now then there's a little more intensive renewal push with let's say t minus 15 days t minus 7 days what would be the number of people covering from there a good amount of user gets covered in between d0 to d7 because the moment their subscription is zero d d after expiry after expiry okay because that's the one that's the biggest that's the biggest point. pool ye ho gaya bhi gaya ha and then second biggest pool comes after d32 d60 a month after expiry their expiry expiry ka 30 days and then between 30 to hmm. 60 days hmm. the biggest pool comes because we do run some promotional campaign to try convert these kind of user but we what we as a business want our customer hmm. to get renewed before expiry of course right that's why because there will be a minimal exercise to get these user we don't have to put some extra vouchers cashback hmm. kind hmm. of thing we have decided right the acquisition of these renewal will happen with a different marketing campaign not with the same marketing campaign sure. not with the same offering mm, mm, there mm. has to be something different some incentivization has to be there because there's a low cac channel right this renewal and if this the more this renewal happens this is going yeah, to helping your affect this overall cost Correct. ltv cac of Absolutely. this entire product mm. so that way it is fair enough mm. so big part between t minus Three months to three minutes, thirty days, and then T zero to T seven in substantial ways, and then thirty to sixty because you get aggressive. Right, and and there's some component of seasonality as well there. So people who let's say bought in Jan, but then they went dormant in the next Jan, but then you had an offer in April. We we back. we try to whenever this festive season comes, sure, we remove that frequency and we try and to bombard like them, bring back thing. everyone kind of situation. Right. So that is the time when we try to reacquire those users hmm. who are dormant from last. Three month, four month, five month, and but we see some volume. Sure, but it is pretty visible that the user which have not been renewed in three month of their expiry, post mm. three month of their expiry, the share is very less. Mm. But again, we do that exercise with some in sales. Some with some sale, we get decent volume, but with some sale, we do not get decent volume. What would be your hypothesis of why people churn from something which is reasonably appealing? We realize that there are few things, right? we have two key offering in the bundle like google one right so th- there are some offer there are some offer in the bundle which are for every kind of user mm. but there are some offer in the bundle which are only for a new user mm. right so some users say right if they have used google one they will not be getting this google one in the sure. next year so they might not be mm. renewing right so that's a one example But in some sense, given the scope of the twenty thing that you offer, there will be something in it for everybody to stick around and keep using. I think till the point we reach to the that convenience level in terms of product for a customer. Even just the portfolio of offerings, right? I mean, I can imagine churn from a single brand because let's say my utility for that brand is kind of diluted and I don't want anything from them anymore. But in your world, there's just so much to offer. I think there's no such one one statement solution for this problem. Hmm. convenience is something which customer expect from multi subscription yeah, I mean, app whole bunch of people second even if we try to cover everything there will be always something which will Sometimes. be missing from the app because yeah. you as a customer might be looking for amazon prime netflix hotstar sony all the ott things there will be someone who will be looking for all the subscription falling in health and fitness category like healthy five so, me cult yeah. fit some anytime fitness and all so there is a lot to do in this category but again i think we are working on that of topic. course yeah so well it's a gold mine of an opportunity i would imagine because i don't see a direct competitor which has a fairly horizontal and multi category play with respect to a lifestyle membership kind of situation so on that note thank you so much for doing this gyan was an exciting conversation i understand the world of prime a lot better than i did previously quite tempted to uh, try this out myself all the best with the growth thank, thank you so you. much thank you